office playing video games, tweeting, doing all this other stuff. <laughs> he's not here. Um, you know, he's working like he works from his house all the time, right. but he's not physically here that much as, as much as he, as he used to be. When I first started, we would be up here till eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night, shooting videos, editing, doing all kinds he's of stuff. He's earned the right to not have to be here 15, 16 exactly. hours a day. Exactly. He's, <laughs> he's got a good crew underneath him. Uh, we, we're all, we're pretty much self-contained. He throws us, you know, some, some leads when we need them, go in this direction, go in this direction. Um, so I said, okay, I'll see what I can do to set it up. And I talked to Alex and he said, you know, see if he'll just come on the show live. Cause I'm really not going to have time to talk to him today. Well, and this is when all that stuff was going down where they were like, Oh, Alex Jones didn't show up to right. our interview and this all that. The ne pretty much two days after. Yeah. Uh, when he, when, uh, was it ABC Stephanopoulos? Some uh, Sunday show. Yeah. They didn't, they weren't going to do it live or they were going to do it live. And then they said not to all that stuff. And so I, I'm like, yeah, you know, he, he put the call out to mainstream media. Here's a mainstream media guy from the Boston Globe, a writer. I went and checked him out. Uh, you know, he writes mainly about coffee and kind of social stuff. So I'm like, wow, I guess they're, but he, I think he went on the campaign trail with Romney. So he does have some political things. And so they sent him here to do some Jade Helm stuff. And I guess he just assumed we all sit around and wait for mainstream media to contact us for interviews. That's what we live for, which we don't. Right. And, but I was happy to, you know, try to see if we could work about to get him here. And I said, you know, how about this? How about you come on live? You do the interview. I think this will be, this will be something good for you. This will probably get your name out there a lot more than, you know, where you're at now at the Boston Globe. It's a little small uh, newspaper. And so at first he said, yes, he could do it. And so I sent him the address and we don't put out our address that much. Uh, that's something that we do keep private because otherwise we would get Tons of people, people here trying to give us, day. give us the documents. Don't and come here. <laughs> there's ways to do that. And it's mainly yeah. through email. If you ever want to get in touch with me, I usually I have my email down on my name key. It's robd at infowars.com. I'm more than happy to communicate with you via email. Um, also, and now I have my Twitter account. So you can <laughs> send me stuff that way. But <laughs> I read a lot of emails and I do respond to a lot of emails. Um, I don't respond to every email. And I don't read every email. I probably have 100,000 emails I've never read in my inbox. We get thousands of emails every day. In total insanity. But I do what I can. And um, so with that, we tried to get him over here. Then, then he hemmed and hawed and said, oh, well, I talked to another editor. And they said, no, I can't do it. I said, well, don't come by the office then because we don't want to have a reporter here that we have to hang out with and babysit while we're trying to do our other jobs. You know, if you look at the command post in there, when they're doing the live show, there's six people working in there. And that's just the people running the show. We got writers. We have the guys um, run the warehouse. We have graphics design people. We have hot tech people, computer tech people. We've got the nightly news division and the reporters. It, and then you got customer service. It's a big operation here. Very big operation. So, you know, I said, don't come here. And, and, and then I went on the air and told Alex that, hey, he's not coming. We, we thought he would be here. Now he's not coming. And Alex got mad, said, that's it. We're done with him. Cause this guy wanted to also have a phone interview. I said, you, I said, if you come in and do the one hour or 30 minutes with Alex, we'll give you a phone interview. No problem. After the show, you could talk to Alex when he's going to a meeting. He said, he's got to be in a meeting at three 30 while he's driving there. He'll talk to you. And he could have had that, but he wanted to neg on his showing up here to do the interview. The first interview. So Jones said, that's it. We're done. Which he even mentions in his article. It, but well, he kind of makes he, it look he, like, yeah, I'm, like I'm the jerk who, who's putting it out on him. Yeah. You know, he, didn't, and, he didn't tell him right away. Right. So it got all misconstrued. And well, and when I, when I got his, his tweet or his, his text, I texted him back after I got it. I didn't have, once he said he was going to do it, I put my phone down. I'm doing a million other things in the office, getting ready for the show. It could be printing something. I even bring Alex coffee sometimes. I mean, whatever needs to be done, I'm here to do it. Everybody's here to, to, to make this, you know, push this boat forward. And uh, so then he tried to make it look like we had staged this thing, which we didn't. Alex didn't know. The word did not get back to him that he was coming on. Because I called Alex after he said that he would do it and said, hey, he's coming on. His name's Matt Visor. He works for the Boston Globe. And Alex immediately went into this Beastie Boys thing over the phone. It was kind of funny. And I laughed. And then he did it on the show. And it was so funny. He even writes about it in his article. So... I hey guys, I hate to interrupt you, but uh, Joe yeah. Biggs is uh, out in the field right now, and uh, he'd like to ah. uh, say hello. There we go. Well, let's go to Joe Biggs right now. Joe, can you hear us? All right, hold on. <laughs> All right. Joe Biggs is on location in Phoenix at the Islamic uh, Community Center. Just getting there. and Yeah, I'm uh, walking up right now. Okay. Give me a second while I'm... Yeah, hey, okay. we'll, we'll come back to you, Joe. We'll just let people know that you're on your way there. And uh, get settled in, and, and then uh, we'll have you pop back in when you're ready to talk. 
But we do have our reporter on the ground. He was in Cleveland this morning. He was actually sending me texts at, at 9 o'clock this morning going, should I stay here in Cleveland? Because we were originally we were going to do an Al Sharpton protest that night. Um, because things didn't, actually the people of Cleveland didn't decide to go riot and loot and, and do all this stuff. They're letting justice take their course and hopefully they're taking nonviolent means to correct the problems in their community. Mm -hmm. And which is good to see. So he, he said, Hey, there's this thing that just happened. It, it's going up in Phoenix. They're going to do a draw Muhammad part two. And ISIS says they're going to attack. Okay. And I said, go immediately make that happen. <laughs> and, uh, because you can't wait with this stuff. Getting to the airport now, you, know, you got to be there an hour before the plane leaves. You know, by the grace of God, Joe's there right now, one day's notice, flying from another location. The guy's been in Cleveland since Sunday, I believe. Yeah. I mean, and just he's a going to Baltimore right after this. And he's going to Baltimore because they're having all hell break loose because the cops are, are essentially standing down. Kind of what we saw in New York yeah. right after the two cops got shot. Well, we, we we're the, not going to get our, have our standoff with Al Sharpton there, but uh, Justin Mooney on Twitter wants us to ask if Al Sharpton is going to pay for the Baltimore riot bill as payback for his unpaid taxes. Oh, that would be so, nice. That'd be good. Hey, we are we are getting a few questions. <laughs> um, I like it. Wow, we really got we're getting a bunch here. Uh, who woke y'all up? And I like that. That's from James Bell. That just came in, and he's at Zets Pony zero eight three. Um, who who woke y'all up? Uh, I was kind of a way I, I became a theater major because I always liked to peer behind the curtain. I was always one of those people that liked to know what was going on behind the scenes. And I started reading, I actually read None Dare Call It a Conspiracy and Who Runs Congress, which I have both of those books on my desk right now. I bought those at a used bookstore on Route 22 in Murraysville, Pennsylvania <laughs> in, I think, uh, 1993 or four is when I bought those. I, I, I'd torn my ACL and I was doing a lot of reading at the time because I couldn't play sports anymore. And I had about a year of rehab. So I was, wow. uh, I was reading. Lots of reading. And I, that's when I started playing uh, bass guitar. But those two books really got me thinking of what was going on. And, and I'd already kind of said to myself, Democrats and Republicans are the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're just in it for the money. They're just in it to prolong their existence in that world of DC and, and not really interested in helping people. And uh, corporations have, you know, bought them off. But what about you? Who woke you up? Uh, well, you know, it's kind of bizarre, but I was like 10 and my best friend's mom was like a real hippie. And she would always talk to us about um, like 2012, you know, that big 2012 theory and all that. So that was kind of the first time when I started to see that there was something more than just things that were going on with my daily life. And then, I don't know, I guess I was like 15 or something and and a lot of my friends and i in chicago were into like reading about the illuminati and stuff so i don't know i guess it was just my friends and i don't really remember any epic i can't say the book or the street but yeah. that's i guess <laughs> I that's my memory it and was, it was my it destiny i was destined to be woken up here so <laughs> and if, if people don't believe in the power of craigslist uh leanne i uh, actually <laughs> She got hired through Craigslist. Marcos in there got hired through Craigslist. Uh, Joe Jennings got hired through Craigslist. Um, <laughs> you got to watch out for that. It's a lot yeah. of... Uh... You know, we put out... That's how that's how we do a lot of hiring because it's immediate. You get people interested really quickly. You can send stuff. It's well, all And you also get the people who think you're just joking and trolling them. So then they send you back really... <laughs> I Asinine did get a weird, responses. I got a, a couple of weird, <laughs> you know, I could have very detailed job descriptions when we do put one out and it says specifically how I like things. And that really made some guy mad, but you know, that's uh, ne neither here nor there. Now, before I, I think we go to Joe Biggs, if we can, if we do have time, I want to play because yesterday we had Wolfgang Halbig on. Uh, he interviewed with David Knight and he's going back up for part two of, of his hearing for, for his Freedom of Information Act, for just asking for documents. He now has to have two hearings because he doesn't believe what he's getting from the people of Sandy Hook are real, the real documents. So the first one, um, it, it's if you watch the whole hearing, you can find it online. There's It's about two hours long. It's really long. There's several versions out there and several uh, really good uh, activists. One, I, I think her name was Kat Waters. I think that's her name. I hope that's right. I met her in New York, but I saw her actually one of the shots. I'm like, oh, I know her. I met her in New York uh, when Alex did the talkers uh, speech few years ago um but she uh, was there I'm sorry to stop you do we've yeah. got nazis oh we've got not oh all right oh. well let's go to that well that's actually one of our good twitter questions all right yeah, what so what's going on biggs can you hear me 
Yeah, there's a, a whole line of people um, standing facing the mosque, and in between the people are uh, like riot cops. Excuse me. And then uh, on the other side of the people that are uh, in support of Islam. Wow. Wow, this is... Uh, this is quite a face-off, then. There's a lot of people screaming and yelling at each other right now. Is there actually any side of, sort of contest going on, or is that just a ruse to get people out there? There's a lot of anger out here, though. Yeah, this is... And it's all coming from the other side right now. It's well, coming from the, the Muslims? The Muslim side, or the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, they're, they're screaming and cussing and telling everybody to, to go F off. Huh. Well, we got a good question from somebody on Twitter, Truth Depot. He wants to, he's asking, do you think the people putting on the drawing contest are government agents trying to spark unrest? What do you think of that, Biggs, Joe Biggs? Do you think they got some controlled opposition in there? Or? Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> he might not even be able to hear us. Joe, can you hear us? Oh, you can? Yeah. Okay. Do, yeah. So do you think it, it's possible that these bikers, since we just had the biker incident in Texas, that, that maybe some of them are working uh, as agents for the government, or you think this is just a... Uh, Try to stir up unrest. A natural event. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that, Joe Biggs, let everyone know that you are live. He is live. <laughs> yeah, tell people yeah, I'm live. live on TV. Well, I mean, there's a giant, giant crowd of people. I mean, you can't tell people to to not cuss and be emotional. Oh, no. Hey, Army. you know, that's going to happen. I totally sure, understand no. that. Yeah. All right. We're on. How you doing? Good. All right. Well, so let's. What do you, so, what, what do you think? Do you about think? This today? <laughs> I think it's my First Amendment right to be out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If this, if Muhammad is going to cry over a cartoon, what about Jesus? He never cried. He's not crying about it. He's saying, "Go for it. It doesn't matter." But when I'm in the United States, I defended this country. I will not back down from anybody trying to stamp on my rights, including Mr. Obama. <laughs> Let yeah. the mind be free. Thank you. Yeah. Now this seems like so, it's yeah. totally spontaneous. It was just announced this morning that they were going to do this, right? No, I think when, it's no, been, a the guy over here, it's been a couple days. Yeah. The guy over here on the other side. There's two guys over on the other side. They keep trying to pick fights with people. Oh well, of course. That's well, and that's that's the question that we just uh, we have from one of our Twitter. <laughs> oh yeah, the guy is flipping people off in all black. Yeah. And see, that was that was kind of one of the issues that I had with this is that this 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 wasn't like a planned cartoon event. I mean, they're going to be they're telling people to bring their cartoons, bring their drawings that they did, and then they're going to announce a winner at the end of it to make it be some sort of a thing. But, you know, I really got the impression that this was sort of a provocatoring type event. So what do you think? What do you think about this today? I just got here, man. This is awesome. I think it's Americans yeah, fed up. Yeah. Well, and that's with being told what to say and how to say it. Mm -hmm. And you know, and our government isn't condemning any of the stuff going on in the Middle East. They seem to be fine with with what's going on. They won't say burning down a church is an act of terror. We they didn't even call the the so Beheading the two guys. Is an act of terror. One of the reasons why the person who put this event on wanted to go to this specific mosque is that the two guys who came to Waco. The two terrorist wannabes who went to Waco uh, and attacked or attempted to attack um, the people there are from this mosque or right. they had ties to this mosque. So that's why they are out here protesting outside of the the Islamic community mosque there in Phoenix. And um, so, yeah, I mean, David Knight said it earlier that the First Amendment has has been worth dying for in the past. So. You know, I don't. Yeah. I don't think that that's you know something that they really want to do. But they said you know exercise your Second Amendment if our First Amendment is crushed. So B Biggs, give us a, a, a layout of the size here. How many people seem to be with the bikers and with the with the Draw Muhammad cartoon rally, and then how many um, are I guess with the mosque with the Islamic Center? Uh, I'd say maybe three hundred right now on the Islam side, and about. 3,000 on the other on our side over here. <laughs> wow. And then how many police? How many police? Um, Probably about, I don't know, I'd say three, 4,000 in the area. I mean, right here in front of me, probably about 60 to 70. But, uh, I mean, they're around every corner. There's more showing up right now. Right. Yeah, now it looks like they're putting up a barricade between the two groups. 
Yeah. Okay. This is just 